So let's jump into the agenda this morning. Uh, obviously, we always start out with this, and it's really important that we keep this in mind. We're going to cover uh, se several of these uh, platforms uh, on any given Friday. Uh, we may spend more time on one than the other. We may spend a little different focus for the day using one of those tools, uh, but we're going to cover those tools, uh, Uzine, GIFSign, LogoZine, MockZine, as we go through the Friday webinars. Uh, I, I can't answer support questions. Those support questions need to... And that's one of the reasons why I have Rose here, not to answer the questions during the time that we're on the webinar, but so that she can give you information about who to contact and what you need to do <coughs> in order to get your support questions answered. Your questions are always important to us. Good morning, Ivor. Uh, the questions are always important to us, Ray. Good to have you on as well. Your questions are always important, but it's really necessary that they relate to the day's topic. If I, uh, and, and it, it requires a little more prep than you think it does. Sometimes I find something, or sometimes I have to have a ready, or I have to have something that, that I don't have, I can't put my finger on at the moment. And uh, when that happens, I can't always answer your question. Sometimes it takes 10 minutes to answer the question. We have three minutes left. So understand that that's important. Uh, and, and we'll try to make sure that I always want to answer your questions. And if I can't, I will answer them the following week if I need to have something in advance. And, um, and oftentimes that's the case. So uh, feel free to share the questions. When you share a question, put a question mark in front of the question rather than at the end. It's a lot easier for me to be able to see that. Uh, we, we've got that posted here at the very beginning. Uh, do this at the beginning of your sentence. It's a lot easier for us to find it than to have it at the end of the sentence or to ask a question, not put any designation on it. And then we're not really sure whether you're making a comment or a question. So this really helps Rose and I both as we go through uh, here so that we can give you the best experience that's possible. And that's the next comment is that we want this to be a good experience. So we're not going to allow people to, to, to be unkind. All right. Uh, I don't answer my partner's offers. You will frequently get partner's offers by email. And when you do uh, understand that unless the purpose of the webinar for that day is that partner's offer, we will not be addressing that during the webinar. And then uh, Rose has given you a link that is there that has some of those frequently asked Friday questions, and that will help you uh, to have a to, to have a really good experience. You'll have those uh, record of that at the end of the uh, at the end of the webinar, and it will avoid some questions that get frequently asked, like "Is there going to be a replay?" The answer to that question is yes, but I just said I will not share last week's replay because. Somebody fell apart halfway through the webinar. And so there's just, we were just going through the agenda as we did that. And uh, there's not any substance there necessarily to share when um, I fell flat on my face. So uh, there, there will not be a replay there, but, but, but we do our best to put the replays up as soon as we can. And we share them in the group and then Rose puts them in the channel so that everybody can have that. Okay. Uh, just a little encouragement for the day. I like to live boldly, push yourself, don't say. Uh, sometimes we we um, uh, we want things to be really easy, and pushing ourselves uh, helps us. To, I'm always telling you, push the limits of what you know, push the uh, edges of of, um, uh, of of the limits of what you can do, and always be getting better. Um, okay, I, I really want I want you to constantly focus on mastering your skills. Good morning, Tyree. Good to see you with us this morning as well. All right, let's jump into the other things that we have here. Um, I, I, I saw this this question come up, and th this uh, Daniel was asking for an opinion, and uh, got lots of those. But I, I, and y'all know what I'm going to do. You know where I'm going to go with this. Uh, I, I was waiting for somebody to ask the question, and finally Eric did. So kudos to you, Eric, this morning, because because Eric asked the question, "What's the purpose? What's the purpose of this design?" And if you don't have the answer to that question, I can't tell you what to think about it. I need to know what's the purpose. What are you going to do? With it? How is it going to work? I, I want to know that. So I'm going to give you some. 
it's one that you need to ask absolutely every time. And if you'll, if you'll take note of these questions, I think it will help you drastically, okay? These are the questions. I want to, I want to help you to, to create the best experience for the other person that's possible. So in order for us to do that, here are some questions I think will really be helpful to you, okay? What's the purpose of the design? I, I, what's the purpose? Where's this going to go? I want to know what's the purpose of this design. I understand that. I, I know what this was. This was testing the designs. But if I don't know where the design is going to go, I don't know what I'm testing. That's that's the point. I, I want to know what's the purpose of the design. Is this a flyer? Is it a poster that goes on the wall? Is it a Facebook cover? Is it an ad that's going to be? In, I need to know what is the purpose of the design. If I understand the purpose, it makes it a lot easier for me to figure out where to go next. So I, I need to know what's the purpose of the design first. So I always ask myself this question, what's the purpose of the design? I, I, I want to know what's the purpose of the design. You start with the end in mind. If I know what the purpose is, then it becomes easier. It becomes a lot easier for me to, to decide where we're going to go with that. Um, Exactly, Eric. And I'm going to show you some illustrations of that in just a moment. Number two, what's the most wanted response? What do I want people to do when they look at this? When they see this, what do I want them to do? Do I want them to stop scrolling? Do I want them to click on it and take action? Do I want them to take out their credit card? What is it that I want them to do? What's my most wanted response? I have a list of 15 most wanted responses. And every time I do anything, whether it's a design, an ad, write a piece of content, whatever it is that I'm doing, I have a list of 15 things. I pick one of those. And that one most wanted response is what I create everything for. So I begin with the end in mind. What am I going to ask the person to do? And I start with that. I knew somebody would ask me for my list of 15. That's my private information, you know. I'm giving you this list right here, and we'll start with that one, all right? Number three, how's it going to be viewed? I need to know what's this going to be viewed on. Is, is this, and like I said, is this, a, is this a wall poster, or is this something I'm going to see on Instagram? Is, is this a, a flyer that's going to be handed out in the neighborhood, or is this something that I want to create a wrap around my vehicle for. I got to figure out how's this thing going to be viewed because it's going to make all the difference in the world in what go what elements go into that design. <laughs> hey, Brad, I got I, I got to tell you I, I I didn't just say I have a most wanted response. I have a list. Uh, and, and th those things may include, uh, so I'll give you part of the list. All right. Since y'all are beating me up with this, uh, friends share just, I'll, I'll, I, I, okay. All right. Here's part of the list. Let me, let me, let me give you part of the things that are on this list. This is just a portion of the list because my 15 are special to me. All right. I, I might want them to go to a sales page. I, I might want them to enter a contest. I might want them to post a response. I might want them to, um, uh, to download a lead magnet. I, I, I've got a list of things. Those are all most wanted responses, but I only do one. And I want to know what that one is. So um, I start with that end in mind. Then I have to answer this question, how's it going to be viewed? How's it going to be viewed? Are they going to see it on, a, on an iPhone? Are they going to see it on an iPad? Are they going to see it on a big screen TV? How's it going to be viewed? I need to know how's it going to be viewed because that's going to make all the difference in the world in how I design it, Correct. Is this going to require all four elements of design? We'll talk about those four elements of design in just a little bit. Because when I look at this, then I have to ask myself that question. Do, do I, how many elements do I need to have inside of this image in order to make it work? Okay. Eve is asking if anybody else is having sound issues. Are you, is anyone else having sound issues? All right. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay. All right. Looks like there's not really a sound issue. Uh, might be me, but 
as Jaime said, just try to refresh. And then finally, how will the viewer respond? Will they respond by clicking on the image? Will they respond by clicking on a link? Uh, what are, how are we gonna do that? And what's going to happen? I have a brand new mic, by the way, folks. So if, there, if there's a sound issue, uh, I'm hoping that it's on your end and not on my end because <laughs> I, I spent a lot of money for a new microphone and I don't, I don't really wanna have that uh, sound issue on this end, all right? Um, how's the viewer going to respond? Do I need them to respond by clicking on the image? Do I need them to respond by writing something down? What do I need to do that's going to help them uh, to respond to that most wanted response above? OK, all of those things, I have to I have to have the answer to those questions before I can answer this question. Um, that's an interesting thing, David. So let's talk about da David's comment is the key for me is that I want my viewers to look at the item and to read its content in its entirety. Um, so let's talk about that for just a moment. OK, because I want to show you something that's really important. If, 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 if this is going to go on Facebook, if this is going to go on Facebook, this is how people are seeing Facebook today. That's how they see Facebook. So if that's a Facebook cover, Facebook fan page or group cover image like that one right there, um, they're not going to be able to read it. Because this is how more than 80%, more than 80% of the public is going to see whatever you put on Facebook right there. They're going to see it just like that. The, the question is not what you want them to do, but what are they going to do? And that's for the user experience. What kind of experience do I want them to have? I've run multiple tests to find out how people are viewing the stuff that we post on social media. More than, and it depends upon what my target audience is, but it's somewhere between 82 at the low end and 97% of people are viewing, a, viewing my social media posts on a mobile device. More than 80% of them are viewing it from an app. So I have to design this for an app. Okay, I'm trying to catch the questions as they go by here, okay? It's a good question, Big, Big Head Bob's asking this. Do you test on each platform or do you use a site to test your content? Everything. I test everything. I want to know, and, and I know that that's not, I'm not trying to be funny when I say that, but the fact is that, that I, if, if I want them to take action inside the app, that's one thing. If I want them to take action and go outside the app, and I set my sales pages up, I set my sales, all my sales stuff up so that I walk them through a process and I know where I lose them at, all right? If I have a, if I have a price right here, and nobody ever clicks on my ad, is it because the price is too high? Or is it because they couldn't read it? See, I don't know. So I have to step them through the process and, and, and get them to the point where I, I know what, I, I've got something I can test and I can, I can figure that out. We talked last week about keeping them on the page and having a pop-up show up. So there's lots of different ways that you do that, okay? Yeah, if you're trying to sell more than one thing, if you're trying to do more than one thing, then you're going to have a problem. And you do. You have the 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 vast majority of people. <clears throat> my audience, the vast majority of my audience, is on an iPhone. I find that really interesting. I thought it would be the other way around, but the vast majority of my audience, and every time I've ever tested it, the vast majority of them are are on an iPhone. They're on some iOS device, uh, either an iPad or an iPhone. Um, but it's but but right behind that are Android and tablets. So we have that way 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 down on the list. 
for people who are seeing it on a laptop or desktop type of a device, okay? But I need to figure out, I, I need, first of all, I need to answer these questions. I need to remember, this is going to be their experience. If this is going to be their experience, then it's really important for me to understand how that's going to look to them. Because if I have a bunch of things in here, and if my desire is for them to read all of the contents that's there, I got news for you, it ain't going to happen. I totally agree, Tony. I totally agree. Space is your friend. I do a whole webinar on white space. White space. White space is what allows you to be able to create a word out of a black blob. White space. Space is your friend. It allows the, the image to be able to breathe, whether it's text or whatever it is. It, it, it gives you room for, for the magic to take place. That's called Word. So Facebook is viewed this way. <clears throat> I'm watching your comments carefully. I know this is a very controversial subject, but um, this is how YouTube's viewed. All of the work that we put into creating the YouTube channel uh, uh, image and all of that, people aren't seeing it. it, it they just don't see it. Okay, Big Head Bob's asking the qu this question, you know what the current resolution is for desktop? I have no idea. And what percentage of folks are on iPhone or Android or desktop? I can I, I answered that earlier. Anywhere from 80, in, in all of my market tests for the last five years, anywhere from uh, around 82, 83%, maybe as high as 86% on the bottom end of people uh, view everything that we post on any type of a social media on a mobile device as high as 97%, all right? This is how YouTube is viewed. This is how Instagram's viewed. Cram a lot of stuff in that Instagram and people aren't going to be able to see it. What they'll do is they'll have to screenshot it and then and then try to enlarge it later. And that's just you're making the experience for the user bad. This is about designing for the user experience. That's the reason why I have to think about all these questions and not just how cool can I make the design look? I agree with that, Brad. Too much work and you lose them. That's the reason why you step them. Don't make it too much work. It's the reason why I had pop-outs on my website is because I don't want to take them anywhere else. All right, everybody listen to me very carefully. All right, listen to me very carefully because I know y'all are throwing out all of these, these things about work. If I have to work at the image, whatever the image is, I will click on somewhere else. And I, the one thing I do remember from last week's webinars, we were talking about pop-ups, and I'm actually going to show you that again today, okay? And then... This is how Twitter is viewed. So keep in mind as you're creating your images that you're creating them for mobile devices. And you're creating them for mobile devices that are visible inside of an app. Mobile device inside of an app, not a mobile. Nobody goes to Twitter.com to open up Twitter on their mobile device. If they do, they're living in the wrong decade. Those things are now available in apps, and the apps are, are, are handled very differently. I can't blow the image up and read it. I have to make sure that it works, and I have to make sure that it works. Otherwise, I'm going to run into trouble, okay? Now, for your ad to have impact, 
for your ad to have impact, it's very important that you play by the rules, okay? If this were to be a Facebook ad, and I'm just saying if it were to be a Facebook ad, look at this right here. What does this say? This is, this is Facebook. This is Facebook. All right? I'm trying to read Big Head Bob's uh, uh, link post here. I can't figure out what that is. Um, it, it, right here, this is Facebook's ad rules, okay? And here it says, to maximize ad delivery, use an image that contains little or no overlaid text. So if you put text in that image, you're going to run into trouble. So this, if I'm going to, if I'm creating an ad, I got to be really, really careful right here. Okay. Little or no overlaid text. It used to be a 20% rule. Now what Facebook does is they've kind of removed that 20% rule. And what they've done is they've minimized ad delivery or they maximize ad cost. <laughs> However you want to define that. So uh, I, I, I need to pay attention to this. But it is a good rule. And I try to kind of keep that rule in mind. Now I want to show you some exceptions to that in just a moment and, and, and things that are easy for people to miss. Okay. So let's talk about those designing for users and those four things, the background, the logo, the tagline, and the product. The background, the logo, the tagline, and the product. Those are things that everybody needs to keep in mind. The background, the logo, the tagline, and the product. All right? Well, I'm going to talk about that in just a minute, Gainer. So hang on to that thought for a minute. All right? Because I'm going to show you where that runs into issues. Okay? And here's a good example of this. We'll talk about the background, the logo, the tagline, and the product in just a moment. But but we're going to, but I want you to see this right here. Okay. This is an ad that I created. This has a logo, it has a tagline, and it has the product image right here. The product image actually has text that's readable in it. As far as Facebook's concerned, if that text is readable, it figures into the overall amount of text. Okay? Just because this is a font and that it is readable here, there's, this is also an image. This is text. But this image has text in it. This tagline has text in it. And the product has text in it. You've got to keep that in mind because that's going to be a place that Facebook's going to look at that. You may get initial approval on it and then get it rejected later. You may get initial approval on it and it may end up going way down. Okay. Uh, Eric, that's a really good point. I'm going to cover some of those things today. So um, I don't know if it's still, that's a question for Rose, but, but um I'm going to cover part of that today. Those four things, the background, the, the, the logo, the tagline, and the, and the product. Okay. We'll talk about, we'll talk through those in just a moment. But in this particular case, in, in this design right here, I have a background. The background's a, a, a very light background. It doesn't conflict with anything. It's not, get, there's no, there's no, uh, th there's no clash that goes on there. It's very simple. It stands out from the, from the white background in, uh, on the Facebook uh, uh, feed. And then it has, um, and then it has the logo, the tagline and the product. All right. So the background isn't busy. It's not distracting. It's simply, I have to hang it in space someplace. So let's make the background something that doesn't detract and isn't so busy and so conflicting that people have issues with it. Okay. 
keep it really, really simple in order to have a successful campaign. Okay. Now we're going to spend a little bit of time. I'll talk about that for a little bit. And then I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about some things on the newer version. This was my intention last week. So it's going to, uh, it's going to, it's going to fall down the list a ways. Uh, okay. Tony, elaborate on that. If you would, please. Tony's made this comment and the eye trail is good. I know where to look first. What's the most important thing? The most important thing in the ad is always going to be the product. It's always going to be the product. And I have to highlight the product. I highlighted the product by having that little slight glowing thing in the middle of the background. So it kind of pulls your eye in the direction of where the product's at. It's also the biggest thing on the page, right? And that's what we're trying to do. If you've got a busy background, your eye doesn't know where to go. And it's easy to get distracted. And just scroll on. That's an important point because all of the information was crammed into the image. It's all inside of the image. And so you're not sure what part of that's supposed to be important. And remember this, when we're looking at a Facebook ad, this is where we make the mistake is that we try to make the ad do everything. I have text up here. I have a call to action area down here. I have a link capability right here. Some uh, Facebook ads, I have the ability to contact by messenger right here. And so I want to, I just want the image to make them stop scrolling and think about the product. And to the degree they do that, the image becomes successful. And that goes back to what's my most wanted response. I want them to stop so that they can take action. Sometimes the very first thing I want people to do is just stop scrolling. Is that right? I'm waiting for a response. If you get their interest, if you can capture their interest, then you have an opportunity to talk about it. Brad, that's a good point. I even struggled with the rule of thirds just a little bit as I was creating that image. Uh, I thought, how much bigger do I make that product? I want need to make the product. I don't want it to be half. Exactly, Olga. In the in the world that we live in today, where people's attention spans are very, very short. Yeah, I agree with that, Kim. Grab them by the eyeballs. In the world that we live in, where the attention span is very short, we we don't want to give them an excuse to scroll by. We want to give them an opportunity to stop and do something. Okay. And that's really important. But remembering. If you give people too many choices, they'll make none. I, 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 that's, that's me. I want one choice. All right. We'll spend a little bit of time talking about the new version, maybe, of Uzine. But I really want you to get this point right here, that our, our designs need to be simple in order to accomplish the goal. Um, I know many of you are saying my job is to get them to read everything that's in the image. Well, then they may not. And that's the point that we're trying to say. Okay. This is the desktop version, Brad. That's what we're talking about. The, the, the version of the desk, the desktop version of Uzine. This was a, a, an example of a GIF sign pop out that I had. Um, 
uh, and and this I actually have this on my website. And when you go to my um, when when you see my website on on a mobile device, when you click on that, the that pop up fills the screen. Okay, and, and it's very very important that you test your user experience so you'll know where it's going to go but i i this is the reason this is what i use gif design for is to create these kinds of images that 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 i can use to pop up and give an explanation or to pop up and show how to how to uh, uh create something or to to give direction and, and and inspiration or whatever that that that's what i use it for most of the time and so my point is that it's really a good idea to um, make sure that you have your images so that they work, so that they're sized so that they work, so that they uh, appear the right way, so that they're not busy and people don't know what to do. You know, something as simple as this. This was a, a, something that I had created the last time, okay? Juliet, that's a really good, that's a, and, and thank you, Kim. Yes. Feel free to put that in the, always feel free to put that in there. This is, we're not criticizing this. I'm trying to give you things to think about because it took, I, I waited and waited and waited and waited to respond because I was waiting for somebody to say, what are you going to do with this? Where's it going to go? And, I, and so that became the inspiration for today was what questions do you ask? How do you know? What are you comparing that to? What, what's, what's your, what, and all of that, okay? In this particular image that I created here, I'm looking for what's the top three reasons why people use uh, have a website and I wanted people to vote if, if it's if it's for an e-com store then, then then use the letter a if it's a, for a membership site use the letter B if it's for information use the letter C and this was an ad pal ad that I had run and the the whole but how simple is that design I don't want to confuse them with a busy background. This is as simple as I know how to make it, black on gray. But it works. It works. I, I, I hate that phrase, kiss, keep it simple, stupid, because the most brilliant people I know are the people who can keep things simple. Just my point. I'll go with keep it super simple. Keep it simple, sweetie. I like that. All right. Then I, I want to talk about mock design for just a minute. May not have time to do that because I really do want to talk about those four elements of design. So I may not get to that. So with that being said, let's stop here and we will um we will go to the dashboard. Okay. So give me just a second. Now, tell me if you're seeing my my dashboard here. I'll just try to get things positioned so that I can still see the chat. All right, good. Now, what this is, is this is an opportunity to see, uh, and I want, I, I want to use this to, uh, as an occasion here. This is an opportunity to see um, how things look inside of um, a Facebook ad, okay? Over here on this side is the right column ad, and I can, we'll go back and we'll talk about this for just a second. This right column ad, that we talked about a little, that, that we, when we were talking about ads and where do people look at ads and how do they see them? If they're looking at this on uh, a mobile device or an iPad, they're never going to see a right column ad. If they're looking at it inside of an app, they're never going to see a right column ad. 
it doesn't appear. There isn't a right column in an app. There isn't a right column on a mobile device. And for that reason, it's really important because you pick which of those places that you actually run ads at. If if 93% of my audience is, is looking at this on a mobile device, then I'm wasting my time, effort, energy, and money by putting that on a right column ad. Does that make sense to everybody? So think about that. You've got to know exactly. It's just dead. It, 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 this is not someplace that we, you want to spend your time, effort, and energy. Um, and, and I've had people say, well, I never saw an ad over on that right-hand column. It's because I don't run them over there. You know, I'm, I'm not targeting 7% of the people who are going to experience my 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 whatever it is that I want them to experience. I, I instead want them to focus their attention on places where I'm going to get the most value and, and the greatest good. And But it does help me drastically to be able to see how this is going to look when it appears in uh, the, the, the news feed on a desktop or the news feed on a mobile device. And so it's, it's, this is a good, it's a great tool. And the way I got that, that's the image preview. So when we go back here, and you take a look at this design. When I click on the uh, on the preview, this is what shows up because this was a uh, this is a Facebook ad medium. And so always go back and kind of click on that. Take a look at what's that going to look like when it appears in there, and that will help as well. All right. Um, now let's take a look at this the elements of design right here. Would it now? now I have all four elements inside of this particular design. I use the background. Let me um, let me move this off the screen, and I'm just going to move these things around a little bit. I'm not going to get rid of them um, for for um, for expediency's sake. But this right here kind of glows in the middle, and so this is where this came from. Let me get this so I can see. And I, I want you to see the background over here. When I click on the background, I pick this background right here. Um, and, and I use this background a lot. I like the color gray. I think I think it, it, it doesn't distract. Uh, I could have used something that had a little bit more attention getting capabilities like this. But when you do that, let's just test it out and see what you think, okay? We'll put this back where it was was to begin with. When you do that, I don't get the same effect that I'm looking for. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't care for I don't care for that, and I think it does distract from the product. Again, I don't want my background, and this is the point I'm trying to make. I don't want the background to be something that gets in the way. I want the background to be the play, the space that I hang my logo, my tagline, and my product on. All right. And so uh, it, it doesn't take me very much to figure out this is going to be much more effective. And I agree, Deb. It it is more comfortable. And and I I, I the most important the most important the most important part of the ad and what I'm, I'm going to create the ad about being simple, about making it simple to be online. That's what my ads going to, that's what my text is going to talk about. The toolbar goes away when you click on something that doesn't require the toolbar, like clicking outside of the image. It's a good question. All right. The background it would be one of those things. But when I click outside of the image, then it makes the toolbar go away. OK, Th this can be dealt with with the elements on the toolbar. So uh, it's going to appear it's going to stay in the way. Um, Brad, that's a good point. And, and I get questions like this frequently about things that, you know, I, it would be great if I had this rule there. Um, it, it, I can pretty much tell what a third is. This is pretty close to a third right here. I'm two thirds above it. I, I, this is pretty close to a third. And, and so I, I can pretty much guess.
Now, I used to use this grid mark right here to, to determine if I had 20% or not, you know, until I got better at guessing, okay? Then, then you program it, Brad. 20% for the maximum benefit of my Facebook ad. When Facebook had the 20% rule and they would reject at 20%, um, if they were going to reject at 20%, I wanted to make sure I stayed underneath that. Okay. Do you consider empty space, lots of empty space above the logo? Again, this is the, the I, I'm, I'm working off of, uh, that rule of thirds that Brad just mentioned a minute ago. Okay. And, uh, it, it's a simple design rule. And that is that you you, uh, you you keep things in 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 thirds. And so what I have right here, the product, I'm I'm less concerned about it being a, a third. But th this is so if I take this third right here, all right, which is what which is what I'm looking at. If I've got this divided, see this is my halfway mark. Okay, so I'm still inside of that halfway mark. Okay, uh, so that 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 puts me in that that kind of the third type category. Um, um, and, and then over here, I, I, this is so I, this is a third, this section right here. And then I've taken a third of the third. And, and that's a really comfortable design style to do it in that manner. Okay. But yes, I, I considered the empty space to be an incredibly powerful feature. Deb, let me see if I can understand your question here. I'm having trouble putting a video ad in the Facebook cover picture for some reason. It's too big or it won't play there. Uh, there are settings that we need to use specifically for that Facebook in our design. Um, that's... That's an interesting question. Let me give you a, a, a highly opinionated Eric answer. Okay. A highly opinionated Eric answer. 80 plus percent of my people are going to view this on a mobile device. I can't see a video in the Facebook cover on a mobile device. What I end up with is black space. If I'm going to end up with black space, I'm going to use it to my advantage. So I would, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to waste my time on putting a video in, in there to do, to do that. Because I already know that the vast majority of people are going to see that on a, uh, on a mobile device. And I, 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 I design for where people's experience is going to be. So that's what I do. Okay. Eric, I don't know the answer to that question because of what I just said. Okay. All right. So the, the, the design elements are pretty simple. I have my, the most, the, the, the thing that I want people to see is this is about website design, right? That that's the product. The product is, Website design. So I want them to see that. All right. And the logo, is the logo important? I could, could I live without the logo on this? Let me ask you this. Could I live without the logo? Um, Deb, let me, let me address that question for just a moment because we did this. We, we ran a test in, in a town in Montana. And we sent an ad to we sent an ad to the 3,600 business owners in that town. Over 80 percent of them did not have mobile friendly device mobile friendly websites. They were not responsive. All right. 92 percent of them opened the ad on a mobile device. Well, that's that depends. Can, can you live without the logo? Yeah. 
D does the logo communicate anything to people? Remember, the logo is about you. I'm trying to design for their experience. All right. And if Facebook's going to limit my, my reach, if Facebook's going to limit my reach by Facebook's going to limit my reach by the amount of text that's right here and this right here, if I have my, and, and with the, the, um, um, with my logo there, the logo had text in it. I would rather have this be bigger and lose that space. At what point does the logo become important for the customer? That's the question that you have to ask. You go back to the agenda. What point does the, what do I expect out of my user? And at what point does the logo, or does the logo become important in their experience? And that's the point that I'm trying to make what Olga just said is, is, is that we're trying to keep this, we're trying to make sure that we give the user the best experience that's possible. If I have to sacrifice something, I don't want to sacrifice this in exchange for my logo. Now, again, it's it's an opinion, but I want I want to make sure that they catch this point more so than the text that's inside of my logo. And and I agree as you as you walk them through the process, the very first thing they're going to see when they open my website, they're going to see that logo, and they're going to they're going to begin to identify that. The, the, that's a, the, there's an interesting side conversation going on here that I, I want to address if I can do that. The, the interesting side conversation has to do with uh, knowing, liking, and trusting and, and all of that as, a, as it relates to that logo. The logo doesn't build like and trust. Just, it, it, it doesn't. You build like and trust. And they'll identify that with the logo eventually. But nobody says, man, I can really, I can really trust this company because they got a really cool logo or man, they used that font. And so we have that really, we, we can trust them. Um, so it, it's important that you recognize that you will never know how effective your ad campaigns are. Keep this in mind. You'll never know how effective your ad campaigns are until you start reaching out to people that don't know you and have no affinity to you whatsoever. Because are y'all listening to me or are you having puppy conversations? It, it, it's once you start to reach people, what you're testing, what you're testing when you're running an ad, what I'm testing when I'm doing this, is, is this getting the attention of people who don't know me? And am I moving them to the next step? Because then I know how effective my advertising is. I know how effective my ad is if, if people who don't know me, who've never had an opportunity to like me and don't have any reason to trust me, stop and click on my ad. Now I have. A converting ad. Now I have something that's going to be beneficial. Now I have something that can make me money. You'll never know 
how effective your ad is until you start reaching people that you don't know and that don't know you. And until you get them to take action on something that you've said, your logo is totally meaningless. Do I think the logo is important? Yes. But oftentimes, I, we went through, I, Gaynor, that's a really good question. And let me address that for just a second, because we had some people that, that were, um, and I've spent a lot of time with them who were in the EFT space. And, um, and so we ran ads that had no words whatsoever. It had emotions on the face. And that's all it had was, was emotions on the face. And we let the text do all the heavy lifting. Rather than all we wanted the ad to do was to capture attention. I'm looking carefully to see here. Um, If there are any other comments. Yeah, uh, the brand name makes all the difference in the world for Coca-Cola. <laughs> Adam Urbanski said when he started his online business, it took him three years to come up with a name and a logo but he was making several million dollars a year before he reached the point where he actually put a name on it. He was paying numerous staff members over a hundred thousand dollars a year before he ever came up with a name and a logo that actually worked. That's the question that we're trying that, that we're discussing right now. Big head Bob is that it does What's going to cause the person, what am I, how am I going to get my most wanted response? How am I going to get that? Am I going to get it with what I have right now? And that's what I'm trying, that's what I have to figure that out. I have to determine what's going to be the best way for me to get that most wanted response. See, the background is always going to be important. It's always going to be important because you can't just hang this in white space. If, if, if I turn that background completely off, it's just hanging in white space, then it gets lost. So I, I have to determine what's going to be the most effective use of my space. If I'm going to use this right here, I'm still going to keep it in the lower corner. Because if I move it up here, what do you see first? I want them to see the product first. Okay. Placement becomes really important. The, the here's the question if, if i write one word in large letters on a eight by eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and that one word is or it, one phrase it's act now i i used to do this i, I did this all the time when i when i, I was a i was a, a a national speaker and i would give somebody in the crowd a piece of paper, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper that had two words on it. And the two words were, so what? So what? So 
how effective is that when I'm when I'm giving a speech and somebody holds this up and says, so what? <laughs> that worked, right? And, and so it, it, it stops you in your tracks. The whole point of the ad and white space is to take action, is to do the thing that needs to be done, right? And, and if you've got a bunch of busyness on there, if they had written out a paragraph, so what? You're, you're making a point that nobody cares about, blah, 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 blah. I, 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 I would have had a hard time t- seeing it and, and, and having it stop me in the middle of what I was doing. All right. So, yes, the white space becomes very important. Just because this space is gray doesn't mean it's not white space. All right. Okay, any other questions? This this got into a, a, a slightly different direction than, uh, uh, yes, off topic, um, than I had intended. But I do want you to see the value of this. If you have pictures, the question is, what are they pictures of? See, the only thing that should be in here is a picture of the product. All right. Anything else here? I, I just want you to think about because I see people trying to do too much in their images. And, and, and in this whole image, which you see right here in this whole image, I want to figure out what, what it is are you trying to accomplish? And if I put pricing and a whole bunch of other stuff in here, it's not going to make any sense to anybody. Okay. With that, we're going to wrap up next Friday, back here, same time, same place. I'll cover some of those things I didn't get to today, okay? And, yes, I use mock design for my ads. As a matter of fact, this is a mock design ad, right? This is a mock design mock-up right here. I just removed the background, all right? Okay, thank you for joining me today. I look forward to talking to you next Friday, same time, same place.